In this video, we're looking at the Asus TUF Dash F15 and the Asus Zephyrus G14, two $1,500-ish dollar laptops from Asus with two very different component setups. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase with that link, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And do note that prices are subject to change, so if you go down there and they're different prices, Sorry. Okay, now let's get into this because first and foremost, last year the Asus Tough A15 was a Ryzen 7 4800H and the Asus Zephyrus G14 was a Ryzen 9 4900HS. So those were much more compatible. And this year we have the i7 11370H inside of the Asus Tough Dash F15. Now both models have the RTX. 30 series graphics. Now this one has the 3070 and the Asus Zephyrus G14 has the 3060. We'll see what matters more, a powerful CPU with a slightly less powerful GPU or a more powerful GPU with a less powerful CPU. Let's get into it. First and foremost, let's take a look at Cinebench. And after we look at these benchmarks, then we'll talk about some of the build quality and choices you can make along those lines. As you can see in Cinebench R20, the Asus Zephyrus G14 is dominating with that multi-core processor. Remember, you have eight cores, 16 threads versus the i7-11370H with four cores and eight threads. And remember, these are both 2021 models. So it is kind of odd. Let's see if the less cores and less threads can win out at some point. Next in the multi-core, same thing. R23 is dominating when it comes to the multi-core functionality. Moving on to Geekbench, you can see the single core is winning out here in Geekbench. There is more single core performance out of the i7-11370H than the Ryzen 9 processor. But then we bump back into multi-core for Geekbench and you're gonna see the 5900HS really step up its game. Now, moving on to 3ds max you can see that the g14 really steps it up and gives us slightly better performance by only about four points but when we shift over to autodesk maya you can see that the f15 is beating out the g14 here moving on to pcc creo we see the f15 taking the prize once again now moving on to solidworks both laptops kind of struggle because they have gaming geforce gpus rather than the quadro workstation gpus Moving on to After Effects though, we see the Asus Zephyrus G14 step it up again and really quite dominate over the F15. Moving on to the After Effects render, I thought the more powerful GPU would help us in this test, but we still see the G14 beating out the F15 by about 90 points. Now, for the 4K export out of Premiere Pro, we see that Intel is still far more optimized than Ryzen for the 4K export. But moving on to DaVinci Resolve 4K export, we see that Ryzen is more optimized and beats out the F15 for the export time. Now, keep in mind, this is the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're doing 4K playback in Premiere Pro, both laptops will have zero drop frames. Both laptops handle playback very well. Moving on to the Photoshop benchmark, you can see that the G14 beats out the F15 by about 70 points. Now, if you go ahead and upgrade the RAM for the Zephyrus G14, you can actually get up to 921 points in the Photoshop benchmark with 40 gigs of RAM. So what you do is you swap out that singular eight gig stick with a 32 gig stick to boost up this performance. And I would say that that's a pretty worthy boost in performance, about 120 points. For the Asus Tough Dash F15, if you upgrade the RAM to 40 gigs, you'll You'll get again about a 70 point increase in performance so we see some nice consistencies there moving on to the thermal benchmarks the f15 is about one degree cooler on the 4k export and this is fantastic both the g14 and the f15 have about 10 to 15 degrees celsius cooler than the previous model the 2020 models for both of these laptops were very hot so it's good to see that asus has resolved these issues in the new 2021 models now, in regards to the build quality, you have the F15 with aluminum top cover, plastic keyboard deck, side panels, bottom cover, whereas with the G14, you have a magnesium alloy chassis. So overall, I'm going to say I like the build quality slightly better because it's all magnesium alloy. But if we're going to talk about the keyboard deck, I really prefer the keyboard deck on the F15. It's a little snappier. It's a little softer. It's a little quieter. Um, and then also the trackpad on the F15 is going to be slightly bigger and it's a little bit more responsive. I like the trackpad better 
on the F15. Now, color gamut range is almost the exact same, which is fantastic. So no matter what screen you get, you're gonna have a nice sRGB for your color gamut range. And for port selection, same thing. You're gonna have a great port selection on the F15 as well as the G14. Both laptops will come without webcams as well. So there's a lot of similarities between these two laptops. Um, there's some added benefits to getting the G14 like magnesium alloy, slightly better performance, better multitasking so you can run multiple programs at the same time. Oh, and one more thing, the F15 has speakers on the bottom of the chassis, whereas the G14 has them on the top of the keyboard deck, so you're gonna have a slightly better audio experience. Now, if you're saying, okay, but the G14 has a slightly smaller screen, I would recommend getting the G15. It's gonna have the exact same components with very similar performance, but you'll get the bigger screen. Now, it might be slightly more expensive for that bigger screen, so when we talk apples to apples, the price point isn't the same, but it's very close. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next video.